In a lot of cases, having the filters directly on the dashboard works just fine. But sometimes it's not really an option because we don't want to overcrowd the dashboard or we just simply don't have enough space. In this case, we could hide the filters behind the button and have them as a pop-up. I show you in this video how to build such a pop-up and have a clean look to it. This is a customer churn dashboard of a bank showing how many customers are leaving the bank across different dimensions. And as you can see, there is really not much room to play with. We have a lot of filters. If you go to page one, you can see this filter pane and we can copy it on page two. And this is going to be the basis of our filter pane here as well, but we are going to reformat it. First of all, select the background shape by double clicking on it. We can make it larger. And after that, we can rearrange our filters. We can have three columns with them, three rows in each column. I'm just going to put them side by side. If you look at one column, it's a bit hard to distinguish which label belongs to which one. So we can have a larger gap between the slicers. We can format them at the same time if we select them all. We can open the selection pane open the slicer base and select all the slicers here holding down shift. And then we can go to visualizations, formatting, general properties, and let's make the height 80 and the width also to unify them 172. Then temporarily we can add some borders to it to be able to align them better, easier. And then we can just rearrange the first column I select the second slicer here and move it below the previous one. So the lines are simply touching and we can also move it. It doesn't work sometimes when they are grouped and yeah, this way is simply. Then we also want to align the first row. So how I like to do it is to have a base line, which is going to be the first slicer here and make sure that you move the other two slicers to a lower position, then select the first one first, then the other two, and then go to formatting, alignment, and align top. It's going to align them to the top of the highest slicer. After that, we can select the last top slicer here, and we want to have smaller gaps between the columns. So holding down shift and pushing the left arrow, we can move it to the side and then select all three of the top slicers, format, align, and distribute them horizontally. After that, we can align the second column properly, select all the three slicers, align, and align them to the left. Then you can select the second slicer in both columns, align them to the bottom, and do the same with age group and seller range, align bottom. With the last two slicers before aligning them, let's look into them. What kind of values do they have? So it has credit card and is active member. It's like a two true false value. So showing zero for false and one for true. Mm, we can do it a little bit better and changing them into textual values. I already created some columns for it. Go to your modeling and is active member. We can replace it with is active member label. Now you can see it's either active or inactive. It's easier to the user to actually see what they select. And we do the same for the credit card. We have this has credit card label here. Replace the measures or the columns holding, not holding. And since we have only two values, instead of a drop down, we could actually use a vertical list and showing the values directly. So select them both, holding down shift, go to formatting, slicer settings, and style vertical list. And since they are taking up more space, we can go to general properties, change the height to 104. And then simply we can select the second one and move it below the first slicer. We can also change the titles. So has credit card label that could be going to slicer header. Let's call it credit card holders. And is active member is going to be active members. Now we can select all of our slicers again, going here on the selection pane. This is the easiest way. 
Then go to formatting general. We can remove the visual borders and effects. And then go back to visual. We can also change the slicer headers because they are a little bit too black and a little bit too big. So we want to de-emphasize them a little bit. Let's go to slicer headers. We can change the font to Segway UI semi-bold. Let's change the size to nine pixels only. And the font color is going to be this dark gray, the second row in the second column. Then we can go to values and we change the font size also to 10. And the font color is going to be dark gray again. And we have to make sure that all the values are visible. So none of them are like cut off. We have the longest values, I think in credit score or salary range. And also let's check if we select multiple values that this multiple selection text is visible. I'm going to remove here the selection. And you can already see that it has a less heavy feeling. It's more clean. It's more organized. Next, we can move the filter pane title to the left. I like to use buttons in a lot of cases instead of text boxes because we have more flexibility with the formatting. And also on selection, you don't activate this text editing field. Then we can go to style and we can change the font color to the same gray and then left align the text. And we can make sure to align it above this geography text. So on this side, they are aligned on the same line. Then we can resize the background shape and double click on it. And this filter background, we can make it transparent temporarily. So we see how it fits the slicers, change the transparency, and then we can move it around. What we want is to have kind of like the same gap what we have between the slicers around the slicers as well, also above the filter paint text. And on the right side, we want to leave a little bit more space because we will have a button there. And also in the bottom, we will have two buttons. So let's leave a little bit room for that. Then we can remove the transparency and then deselecting it and selecting it again. We can just align it on the top of these visuals below. And maybe you have to change the corner radius as well. As you see here, they don't align properly. And let's go to shape and let's change it to maybe eight pixel or eight percent. So now we can add some buttons to be able to interact with it. Let's go to insert buttons and we are going to add a blank button. Then go to button shape. And we are going to give it a rounded corner, a completely rounded corner. So we can just max it out. Then go to style, enable text and add filter as text. The font is going to be Segway UI semi bold and 12 pixel. Then we are going to give a color, a blue color to it to fit the overall color palette of the design. I already selected the color. So we can just go to more colors and you can add this blue to it. Then we can disable the icon and enable the fill. But in the default state, it's going to be 100% transparent. Then go to border. We add the same blue color to it and make the width two pixels. After that, we go to the state and change it to on hover. In this case, the font color is going to be white. The fill is going to be blue and we add 70% transparency and the border color can stay the same. You can see up on hover how it changes. Then we can go and change the state to on press. Text color white again. The fill color is blue with 50% transparency. The border color stays the same again. And now when you click it, you have a slight effect indicating the click. This is going to open our filter pane, but we also need buttons to be able to close it. So let's copy the filter button. And for this filter, I searched for a cancel symbol like an X on Google, but I already copied it in this XXX value measure. Here you can just select this and 
copy it into the button style. Make sure that you change the state to default and replace the text with this. We can also make it larger. Let's make it 18 pixel. And in this case, we are going to change the color to dark gray. It matches the text colors on the filter pane. And we can remove the fill and also the border. Then go to the on hover state and we just make it a lighter gray. And then on press, it's going to be dark gray again. So then we have this interaction when we are clicking on it. And we can go to general properties and make the entire button smaller, 40 by 40. And then we will move it to the side. And the close button and the filter pane should be also aligned. It seems like the text is lower, so we can select them both. Then go to formatting, align, and align to the top. And you can see how off we were. And now this seems a little bit too large here, this gap on the left side. So we can just make the background shape by double clicking on it a little bit smaller and something like this. So now also this distance on the side and on the top seems like the same. So this button is going to close the filter pane, but to make it more user friendly, we can add another close button in the bottom to make the life of the user easier. So we are going to copy the filter button one more time, move it to the bottom of the filter panel, then go to style, change the state to default. The text is going to be close, the font color dark gray. We will remove the border and then in the fill for the default, white is okay. The state on hover, we make the font color white, that's okay, we can keep it like that. And in this case, the fill is going to be this second gray in the first column. And I would also change the transparency here to zero on the fill. So when we are clicking it, it's actually getting darker in the same way like the filter button here. If we select multiple slicers, multiple values in different slicers, and then we want to remove them, it can be a lot of work to do that. So to make it easier, we can add another button to reset or clear all the slicers at the same time. For that, we are going to copy the close button, align it with the other close button, and when they are touching, I just move it four pixels to the left to have some gap between them. And then go to style, select the state default. The text is going to be clear. And in this case, the font color is going to be red, this middle red, the third row. This indicates that if you click on this clear, it's going to execute like a negative action. It's not really negative, but still removing something. So it's like kind of like a warning color for that. Then go to fill. The white is okay for the default. Then we can go to on hover. Font color white is fine. And the fill color in this case is going to be the first thread. Then go to the state on press. Here we have to change the text to clear again. And the fill color is going to be the second thread. So when we click on it, it's also going to be a bit darker. And then one more thing, if you double check here, the distances between the bottom edge and the right edge, it's also different. So I would just move both of the buttons a little bit up. Another thing which would be cool is to add an apply filters button because we have the option actually, if you open the actions in one of the buttons, there is this apply all slicers option available but we cannot use it in a way that when we click on the button, it applies the filters and also closes the filter pane. So we are going to leave it out. Okay, next we are going to create the actions, the bookmarks for these buttons. We can go to view, open the bookmark pane. I'm going to hide the data here. We don't need it for now. And let's add two bookmarks. Let's call them show filter pane and hide filter pane. So how the bookmark works, it saves a current stand of the dashboard. If you right click on one of them, you can see what is affected. 
the data being shown that could be for example selecting a slicer and whenever going back to this bookmark the same slicer is selected the display whether a visual is visible or not and only on the current page or not in this case we can leave it on and whether we want to affect all the visuals on the dashboard or on the page or only the selected visuals in this case we want to hide the filter pane so we only want to affect the selected visual then right click again and we don't want to affect the data only the display so let's select the data then we can select the slicer base and hide it when you hide it then make sure that it's selected again and then right click on the filter pane and it's going to affect only the selected visuals click update then we can show the slicer base again the filter pane select it one more time and now this time we are going to change the show filter pane affect only selected visuals don't affect data and then click on update now when you switch between the two views you see that it shows and hides the filter pane you see that the buttons are not affected by it it's because they are not in this group this button is the filter button we are going to leave it as it is but we will move the other three buttons within the slicer base now all the visuals are affected by the bookmarks then we can add these bookmarks as actions to the buttons select the filter button enable the action on the formatting pane type bookmark and show filter pane then we select the two close buttons enable the action and here is going to be also a bookmark and hide filter pane now when we click on the buttons they are going to execute the actions for the clear button if you go select it and go to the action we have this clear all slicers option then select some slicers and now when we click on clear it removes all the filters this is good for us here but you might have scenarios where it's not a very good option for example if you have a slicer for example we have a date slicer outside of this filter pane and you don't want it to be affected by this clear all slicers that's not gonna work because that affects every single slicer on the page without exception and you can't control it that's one thing to keep in mind and another thing to keep in mind that it doesn't affect the selections on this default filter pane that could be also a thing what you want to influence but it's not going to be influenced by this clear all slicers action so instead of that we could also create a bookmark let's add a new bookmark and call it clear filter pane it's going to affect also the selected visuals and in this case it's going to affect the data but not going to affect the display so disable the display and now we can group all our slicers by holding down shift and selecting the top and bottom slicers then you can press ctrl g or you can just right click and group them I'm going to call it slicers and select the group then right click on the clear filter pane and update it then go to the clear button actions type bookmark and add the clear filter pane oh yeah one thing if you save or update this clear filter pane make sure that all the slicers are deselected so nothing is selected because that's the state how it's going to be saved if something is selected and then you update this clear filter pane whenever you activate that bookmark it's going to go back to the current selection so make sure that nothing is selected then select the slicers group and then update this clear filter pane but for us everything is all right now so we can just select some filters and text the clear button you can click on it by holding down ctrl and you see that everything is removed 
So this is how to build it up. I think it's pretty clean looking, but there are some improvements we could make. For example, when we close the filter pane, we select something and close it. We have no indicator that a filter is selected. We don't see anything. We could make some formatting changes, for example, dynamically coloring the button when something is selected. And we could also give a counter, a filter counter, show how many filters are filtered. If you want to see how to do it, you can click on this video. We are going to build these indicators step by step. Take care.